this is our uh, last attempt at putting the clutch and everything back together in this car. Uh, we got a whole new clutch assembly, we machined the bell housing, we had custom spacers, CNC machined and everything like that. So now it's going to go together the final time, all of our clearances and everything set properly, air gaps, tolerances, hoping for the best. <laughs> if you're out there and you hear me and you see me, pray for this thing. Please pray because everything that we've tried to do hasn't worked so far. This is the final attempt at doing something. We've machined the bell housing again. We've done added spaces. We have done everything possibly. And with the help of Rick from RTS, possibly it's gonna finally run properly because we don't know what else to do. We've already disassembled and reassembled this car probably 10 times. So if you hear me, pray. Just pray. All right, so for the past year, we have been running an ACT triple plate, and obviously we just um, decided to go with the Tilton because it's a proven setup for the 2JZ using the dog box. So we actually stopped trying with the other, tri with the other clutch because we w ran into many problems with the clutch actually getting stuck, burning the discs, and doing all kinds of things. So now we're gonna attempt this by recommendation of RTS, so hopefully it works this time. So this is the Tilton Slave Cylinder Throw Bearing Assembly that they sent us from RTS. It actually mounts to the inner of the belt housing here. Before, the issue we were having is that this intersection here, these four pedestals were not straight, so it made the uh, throwout bearing sit at a slight angle. So we had perfect clutch engagement without the car running, but as soon as the engine was spinning, then it would kind of kink our, um, our throwout bearing sleeve a little sideways and we wouldn't be able to get the pedal to engage. So now we have spacers and everything that our buddy machined for us. It's gonna get us the perfect air gap for the throwout bearing, to, uh, the fingers of the pressure plate clearance. So we're assembling the bell housing with the slave cylinder assembly and everything now. The bottom of this here has the shims underneath the slave cylinder to the bell housing, these silver pieces right here. That's what allows us to keep the perfect amount of air gap between where the face of our throwout bearing is and to the face of our pressure plate. Because if you have it too tight, then you'll burn up the clutch because it'll never let it fully disengage. Slaves on all that stuff in, we're just bleeding it now and checking clutch engagement. Pretending to be Gore-Tex. Uh, bleeding the clutch. Alright, pump it. Pump, pump, pump it up. Hey, what's up? My name's Kyle. Uh, I'm a, one of the fabricators here at Drift HQ. Um, while Josh basi basically focuses on um, a lot of the cage and chassis fabrication, um, I step in and I focus on a lot of the stainless steel, titanium, uh, aluminum work, anything that has to do with pie cutting, um, aluminum fabrication, flex joints, manifolds, stuff like that. So it's a huge part of uh, being able to run a shop like this. Um, having that um, type of fabrication and those capabilities. So that's basically what I do here and here's a good example of it up there. Um, you know, turbo mounting, uh, intercooler mounting, uh, just basic, you know, simple fabrication stuff like that. So, and that's basically what we got going on here. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. So I appreciate it's about you. That's what you appreciate it's about you. Hi. Got it. Hi, I'm Kyle. Come on. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the bolts, yeah. Do you have more bolts? Look, I am helping. This yes. one, yeah. Yeah. Thanks, bro. Oh, yeah. Yes. One more time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Good inside. installing the custom transmission cross member we had fabricated and 
We also made a custom Delrin mount that we just cut out of a block of Delrin ourselves because we want to have some insulation, not necessarily go full solid, just protect the casing of the transmission when we're, you know, clutch kicking and everything like that. So now with the trans cross member in there, just got to put the drive shaft and the shifter everything back in and we're going to test it out. Drive shaft we had custom made. As opposed to the stock BMW drive shaft has rubber insulators. I think they call them Guibos, and um, they have a tendency to fail, especially as much power as this little thing makes. Then uh, also it's a one-piece drive shaft, so you don't have any center support bearings or insulators we have to worry about or deal with. And uh, also this is custom rear flange on it for the winter's quick change that we run back here. Right now we're installing the four inch exhaust on Duarte's drift car. Uh, we got four inch all the way back um, for superior flow. Uh, we got <clears throat> four inch vibrant V-bands right here. Uh, easy to take take down and uh, install again because exhaust is just a pain in the butt regardless. So we're gonna throw this up here, put this all together. So I made this exhaust out of um, <clears throat> 308 stainless, 304, one of the two, all from Vibrant. Um, they make really good product, the four inch V-bands as you can see. I'm really happy with the way the downpipe came out with the pie cut. We had to pie cut a lot of this stuff because it was an extremely tight fit due to it being a four inch exhaust. Um, you know, running the 2J, you're gonna have a, a lot of exhaust flow, so. Um, Pie cutting is necessary to, to squeeze into tight places and make things fit where you really need them to go. And you have a great example here of this downpipe. So last step of the process, fill in the transmission and test yeah. it out. Yeah. And that's it, hopefully everything works this time. What we got that limited edition platinum stickers. My question for you is, where's your shirt, dog? Oh. Doesn't matter, man. I came with the stickers. I got more Drift HQ rep than all you guys right now. Check this out. Stickers on deck. Shiny stickers on deck. More stickers. I got the big old Johnnies for all y'all that want to represent us. Right, D? All right. There we go. There you go. You gotta do the thing with teeth, you know? Nope. <laughs> All right, look. Shiny. Oh, I can't see it. Tip, pull it up. Oh. How do you not see it? I'm looking at the camera. It pretty much just, um, well, it's a transfer paper that looks like that texture, but it's, um, it's, you know, shiny. Shiny boy. When we pressed it before, it was just getting completely stuck. Like they would shut the car off and then it would feel like like we were doing something completely, completely wrong. was that his clutch pedal was engaging a little lower than we wanted so we thought we still had a little bit of air in the system and sure enough we bled it out and still had a little air pocket in the in the bleeder line here.
Yeah, I can see it. Last clutch disc isn't engaging. Even though our input shaft slipped all the way in, our last one isn't engaging. It's gotta be some kind of flywheel spacer or something that we need for this. There's no way. We're still centered here. All of our bolts and nuts are in place. Yep. All of our hydraulics are still in place. No excessive clutch wear. Nothing weird going on. So now we're gonna pull this apart the rest of the way. What's up guys? After uh, pulling the clutch apart again after a test drive, we started getting a strange noise. So we did a little bit more digging, pulled it back apart, as you can see. And we found out that our input shaft actually wasn't engaging the third disc of our triple plate. So we were just kind of gritting the input shaft into the splines of the clutch. So we found a solution for it. We're going to use automatic transmission uh, flex plate spacer and put it behind the flywheel. That'll bring our clutch assembly a little bit further forward. And that's going to put our uh, input shaft into the third disc. And then we're also going to have to reshim our clutch to set our, 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 our slave cylinder to set our air gap. And then once we get it all back together, hopefully we'll have it ready for some testing and tuning tomorrow. Um, take it out to Immokalee, see what she does. Subscribe, like, follow, share, tag your friends, and see what she does tomorrow.